Chris here and I'm back with the Poco F3. I've given it a full review, but I'm taking a look at it again with the new update of MIUI 12.5, but also the Poco X3 Pro and the X3 NFC. This is a comparison review of these three models here. And I'll answer that question that if you're looking at one of these phones here, which one is best for you? So this in-depth comparison will cover their build quality, the screens, performance, benchmarks like and Tutu, 3D Mark, wireless performance, GPS, battery life, charge time is all going to be covered. So this one, the F3 is the flagship killer model that has a 120 Hz AMOLED screen with the other 220 Hz screens here, they are IPS. This model is powered by the Snapdragon 870. We have the 860 in the Poco X3 Pro and then the, well, more lower end, Snapdragon 732G in the X3 NFC. Inside the box of these phones, you will find the typical POCO cable here. So that is type A to type C. We have a 33 watt charger. So it takes just over an hour for the X3 Pro, just over an hour for the X3 NFC and under around 50 minutes for the POCO F3. And I'll give you exact charging times later on along with the battery life too in this in-depth comparison. So we get a SIM tray tool and all of the phones, they will come with a case as well. Now, all of them use a clear TPU style case. There is a user guide for each of the phones too as well. And there is no Type-C adapter with the F3 included, and we don't get any headphones or anything like that. So you can see that the quality of this case, it's not bad. It has a perfect cutouts, of course, as it is from the manufacturer. So from the left to the right here, we've got the X3 NFC with the Snapdragon 732G. And then we have the Snapdragon 860 that is housed within the Poco X3 Pro here. And this is the Poco F3 with the more potent out of all these three chipsets, which has the Snapdragon 870. So the 870 is basically an overclocked 865, which is a last gen flagship chip. So a very good chip in this one. And this one is also very good as well. Now you can see the build of these two are exactly the same. They share the same design here. So we do have with the material on the back here, this is plastic, okay. And a plastic frame around the outside on all three of these phones here. So none of them has a metal frame. Their metal is on the inside, so it's internally there. If you remove the SIM trays, you will see what I mean there. There's alloy on the inside, and it's just plastic on the outside. But it does look like it has metal, the finish of them. So all three of the phones, they do have side fingerprint readers, and they're equally pretty much just as fast, but the faster chipset one here, the F3, seems to be the best out of them. I'll just test them now. Okay, so placing my thumb there, and that unlocks very quick on the F3. Okay, and this is the X3 Pro. So again, this one is quick, but I think the F3 is just a little faster there. And I have noticed a bit of a speed difference here, but still very quick and very accurate, the X3. But you can see that is noticeably the slowest out of these. No, understandable because it is, of course, the one with the weakest chipset. So there we go, that's a little slower. But accuracy of the fingerprint readers is very, very good with these. So this, the blue color, I really do like with the X3 NFC. Now this model here has a 64 megapixel main camera, 13 megapixel ultra wide, and in fact the highest megapixel counts and maybe even the best cameras out of these three, which is unusual. It's the cheapest phone here and with the weaker chipset. Two two megapixel cameras, one's for depth, one is for macro, which is, yeah, sticker cameras, they are really just a waste of time, the two megapixel cameras, I'm really against them. It's just really for marketing, isn't it, to say it has more cameras, and exact same setup here, but we have an eight megapixel ultra wide, okay, with the X3 Pro, and the main camera is 48 megapixels. Then with the Poco F3, this one shares the design, we've seen this before on the Mi, 10, which is the Mi 10i, and also the K40 series. And we've got a 48 megapixel main camera. We have a microphone right here on the back, which is different there. That's for the audio zoom. Five megapixel macro camera, and then an eight megapixel ultra wide on this, which really should be a 13 megapixel on the more expensive phone. You would think so. Build quality on this one. So we do have the frosted white on the back of this one. Very, very nice. Our Gorilla Glass. 5, Gorilla Glass 5 on the X3, and then it is Gorilla Glass 6, I believe, with the Poco X3 Pro. Both the X3 NFC and our X3 Pro have the 3.5mm headphone jack. Both of them have FM radio as well. So if you need both of those important, well, audio options, 
then they will be the phones to go, definitely. So we don't have it, okay? We need a Type-C adapter with the F3. And the SIM tray is on the bottom of this one. So it takes two nano SIMs. And the good thing about the X3 and the X3 NFC here is that they do actually take micro SD cards. So we've got the nano SIM support and micro SD with these two models, which is another reason to go for one of them. And then all three of these phones, they do have IR transmitters at the top, secondary microphones, and they all have dual loudspeakers. So the earpiece doubling as a loudspeaker with all three of these, and then that downwards firing loudspeaker, which is on the bottom. I'll give you a sample of the loudspeakers later on in this video. So due to the larger 5,160 milliamp hour battery that is within the X3 NFC and the X3 Pro, they weigh 217 or 218 grams. And it's also a thicker phone. You're looking around nine and a half millimeters. And then if I just add the F3 here, this is a lighter phone because it has a smaller 4,520 milliamp hour battery. It's also thinner too, around eight millimeters. So if I do hold them here, Side by side, you can see the thickness that the Poco X3 NFC right now, clearly a thicker phone and a heavier phone. Now, all three of these phones here, they do have 6.6 inch screens on them. So AMOLED, 120 hertz, IPS 120 hertz, IPS 120 hertz. So the difference in the chipset will add to the performance of the UI and I'll get onto that soon shortly. So having a look here, let's have a look at the bezels on them. Uh, I do find that the Poco X3 bezels are the best, and we've got the same display, of course, on those two there, which are the same IPS panel. Now, what happens with that IPS, you can see now here a little bit, with the, especially with the white background and the cutout, that there is a slightly dimmer edge around the outside of this, a little bit of like a shadow. It's not a uniformed white color, and that's because of the IPS panel, the traits that it has there. Now, a lot of people always comment on screen burn. They just love to defend the fact that they got an IPS phone, and I do understand that, that people are concerned about screen burn. I have not had a screen burn phone with OLED or AMOLED for years now, so it's not really too much of an issue unless you're always constantly staring at the same uh, screen, I think. And if you intend to hang on to a phone for five years, maybe then you might see a bit of screen burn. I think it's a bit of a non-issue. So the cutout is smaller here with this one, but we do have this golden ring around the outside, uh, which is a little bit of a distraction, especially when the phone is off, you can see that more, it makes it stand out. Whereas with these two, it does not stand out as much with the 6.67 inch screen, the size of these phones and getting hold of them and getting access to that fingerprint reader, I do find to be very, very comfortable. And as mentioned, they're very accurate and they are very fast, all three of these phones there with unlocking. Now a little bit more about that screen on these ones. So there is one thing I wanted to point out with the Poco F3 that is quite important, I feel, that yes, it has the brighter screen, okay? We are looking here at, in terms of display brightnesses, measured with my light meter, 481 nits versus 400 and almost 90 nits on the X3 Pro, and then up to 850 or so. And in direct sunlight, this display can get up to over 1000 nits, but you can see right now, all three of them in sunlight, they all look about the same. Why is that? And that's because the Poco F3, when it gets hot, especially in the sun and recording video, taking photos, the screen starts to get dimmer and dimmer. And that is a throttling that's taking place with the display. So it ends up being exactly the same as these three in direct sunlight. That display will then dim itself down to about 450 nits. And they are excellent. The displays across all three of them aren't bad. But of course, the IPS having just the non-uniformed whites and the other colors, you do notice that. So if you want the best display, definitely go for the Poco F3. So very good touch response across all three of them and no real problems there. Now, the ROM performance, I wanted to comment a little on that, that we are running different UIs here, okay? Because with the F3, we've got MIUI 12.5, we've got MIUI 12.5, and then we have a MIUI 12.0 here with the X3 NFC. It still hasn't received that update. And I actually think the ROM in this one is a little bit better, more stable. Now I have encountered a few bugs with the F3. What has happened is a couple of times I have seen the icons just have not shown up. Unlocking it takes a few seconds, they show up. I've had the refresh rate change on me from 120 hertz down to 60 by itself. I've also had camera settings that I've gone in here and I've changed say the video to put it on to 4K and later it's reverted back 
to, which it's done again, it's gone back to 1080p, and I don't really know why that is happening. Now, I do know that if you change over to the ultra wide, it automatically will change then, but if I didn't even do that, it was still happening there, uh, which is just one minor annoyance. But the ROM speed with now MIUI 12.5, on especially the Poco F3 and the X3, I've noticed that it is very, very quick. So very, very fast, smooth, multitasking across all three of these isn't bad, but you do see that with the Poco X3 NFC that this one is noticeably a little slower once you start to multitask, but overall performance is not too bad. It's just at times you will see some of the animations will bog down a little bit. And just so it is clear again, this is the X3 NFC, X3 Pro, F3. Three. So when you get these phones, bloatware. There is a lot of bloatware. So you can see across all three of them, they pretty much have the same bloat on the ROMs. And I did uninstall on all of them quite a bit of bloat, but the most bloat was on the X3 Pro for some reason, about two and a half gigabytes. Now you just go into system, you go into apps, and you can uninstall them. Fairly simple to do. And this will only take you about like five minutes to get rid of all the bloat that they put on there. So at the time of the video, doing this comparison, of course I am on the latest firm firmware with these three models here. And as mentioned before, like there is a difference because it's MIUI 12.5, which is quite a big update versus 12.08 uh, that I have on the X3. So internal storage speeds, we've got UFS uh, 3.1 versus 2.1 on the X3 NFC. So you can see here that there are some differences there with the speeds. So the fastest being, well, the fastest phone here too, okay? So sequentials are very good on the X3 Pro uh, and the random reads and writes just slightly better here on, of course, the F3. So that's the faster phone there. And I mean, this is still okay. What we're getting on the X3 NFC there isn't really too bad there. Okay, so just zoom out of these. So that is our internal storage speeds. What about Antutu? So you can see there is a big difference across all three of these devices here that, yeah. Okay, so Snapdragon 732 versus the 860 versus the 870. So big difference there. And most of that is the GPU. So the gamer phone out there is this one. Although I can't really tell too much of a difference. I'll get onto it later with gaming performance. The X3 Pro is excellent performance wise and it doesn't seem to get quite as hot. Or although here you can see it was up 6.5 degrees versus the other two that only went up five so wildlife, this is a 3D mark, another 3D test. You can see that, yeah, with the graphics, it pulls through a lot faster here. The 870 being on average uh, just over five frames per second better there with that score. X3 and FC is expected, quite a low score there. Now, this is interesting. Widevine level one cert on both of these two. So the F3 and the X3 Pro, but not on the X3 NFC. Why, 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 Xiaomi? I don't know. Poco, should I say. A camera, two API support, level three across all three of them. That is great. That's what we want. So look for Gcam ports. They should be working. Uh, quite a bit of a difference here in our wireless speeds too as well. So some, I wouldn't say unexpected results considering the chipset, but you can see the important one here is to look at our maximum speeds. And we're looking at close to a gigabit transfers, really close to the router versus the same spot. Uh, only 324 or 348 uh, with these two here. So a lot slower. So if you want the best wireless throughput, this is what I'm just testing is simple wireless throughput, Wi-Fi 6 network, Wi-Fi 6. This is Wi-Fi uh, 5 on that one. That's all that the Poco X3 NFC supports. A GPS across all three of them is standard for Qualcomm. So three meters of accuracy. Average signal strength actually came out to be better on the X3 NFC and the X3 Pro, which was unusual. So walking around, it seemed to follow me around a little bit better, but honestly, there's, there is really no difference with that. Now, important stuff here, battery life. Bit of a surprise here. Now, all screens calibrated to 200 nits of brightness. Okay, equal conditions, same network, same position, same signal strength, basically, uh, although it was slightly different on this one. So the winner here is the one with the smallest capacity. Okay, so that's the 14 hours and 24 minutes running at 120 hertz versus 11 hours on the X3 Pro versus uh, 10 hours and nine minutes on the X3 NFC. So even though these two have a larger battery capacity by quite a nice margin, uh, it's actually faster, this one. Why is that? Well, it's to do with the chipset being more efficient, but more so the screen. The screen, the AMOLED screen is a lot more better, is a lot more efficient on the battery when it's showing the dark images and things. It loses 
less energy. So that is why there. Now, charge times, we are looking at here, you can see 49 minutes to go from 40% to 100 with the F3 versus 66 minutes and 67 minutes with the 33 watt charging across all three of these with their original cables and chargers. So they all charge very fast. But if you do want the best charging time, clearly the Poco F3. Audio quality now. So these two models here, the X3 NFC and X3 Pro have 3.5 mm headphone jacks and FM radio. Yay, that's good. And very good quality out of them. So cool quality across all three sound the same to me. Now loudspeaker quality, uh, it actually goes really in price here and performance because to me, the best sounding just though is the Poco F3 and then the X3 Pro is second and then third place is the X3 NFC with the sound. And you'll hear the difference now as I just play a short sample at 100% volume across all three of them. Gaming performance with everyone's favorite PUBG. So this is the X3 NFC at the top with Snapdragon 732G. It only allows for the ultra frame rate maximum. But whereas with the F3, which is at the bottom right here, and the X3 Pro, you can go up to HD and even HDR and use the extreme frame rate option and putting it onto smooth, it doesn't give us any higher than extreme there. So that's what I'll be running. Extreme, extreme, and then ultra Let's jump into a game and see which one of these performs the best. So obviously it's very hard for me to play all three of these at the same time and getting shot at on three phones. But you do notice the difference that this is the F3. Right now it is very, very smooth looking around and with the speakers very immersive across all three of them. So I'm probably going to die. I'll swap over now to the X3 Pro. And to me, the X3 Pro is same settings, different, different area of the map right here. I'm getting shot at too as well with this one. It does feel exactly the same, really, but maybe not quite as smooth. I can't even see where he is now. He's gone. Okay, so these are just bots because I should have... There we go. I should have already been dead. And then the X3 NFC here, the weaker chipset, the Snapdragon 732G. You can tell the difference. I mean, it's still very, very playable. Okay, I've already managed to get one kill with this game here. And looking around, because of the frame rate cap being uh, less you notice that, yeah, it's not as smooth, but it's still very, very good. And then looking at the value for money out of all three of these devices here, I think definitely the one to go for if you're a gamer on a budget is clearly this one, the X3 Pro. And what about our cameras now? Is there a big difference between all three of these phones? You can see with the front-facing camera, this is vlog footage, that they are using electronic image stabilization. But note that we have less of a crop here with the X3 NFC and seems like slightly more of a crop on the X3 Pro. So electronic image stabilization, it seems to be doing a decent job here and 1080p maximum with these 20 megapixel front facing cameras. Video performance now, so they can all three of them shoot 4K. And what we have is the difference in the megapixel count here, which of course is the 64 megapixels on the X3 NFC and then the 248 megapixels on the X3 Pro and the F3. They are using electronic image stabilization and you can see as I walk down these stairs here that it's relatively steady across all three of them and it looks like the crop on them is pretty much identical to there with all three of the cameras. Now I haven't seen any problems with the focus either, it seems to lock on to everything just fine with the three cameras here. So let's move over now to the ultra wide. So with our ultra wide we get more in the shot. Now the funny thing is the cheaper phone, the X3 NFC, allows us to shoot 4K ultra wide with its 13 megapixel sensor, but the 28 megapixel sensors in both the X3 Pro and the F3 only allow 1080p, which is a real shame and doesn't really make sense that the best ultra wide camera, at least for video right now, is actually in the X3 NFC. So if I jog ahead now, you can see that all three have pretty much the same level of electronic image stabilization.
As you saw from that, the X3 NFC here doesn't have the best of the low light performance out of all three of them. So this model here, however, does have the best ultra wide camera for stills and 4K video, where the other two are only 1080p with the ultra wide cameras, which is a bit disappointing. It doesn't kind of make sense. Why does the cheaper phone have the best cameras? Well, best ultra wide at least there. But anyway, I would not consider the Poco X3 NFC. Why? Because we have, of course, the X3 Pro. For an additional 20 to 30 euros, it depends on the pricing and the sales that are on, it's well worth it to save a little more and get this one. You get much better performance. Now this of course has the micro SD card support, it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, NFC's on here. It really does cover a lot of the bases there and now it does have MIUI 12.5, which the X3 NFC doesn't have at the moment. Now because of the new update, I have noticed that even with the Poco F3, that on MIUI 12.5, this being a bit of a re-review, a long-term review of both of these models here, that the performance has greatly improved in the new UI. So Poco launches a lot faster there and just in and out the settings there with MIUI 12.5, smoother animations just look so much more better. However, it has introduced a few minor little bugs on both of these models that I mentioned. So I'm seeing some UI glitches and I've seen a few changes there. Now the original uh, minor issue that I pointed out with the Poco F3 when I first reviewed it, when it came out, was that the display gets very dim when it gets hot in direct sunlight, especially when you're using the cameras recording 4K video, it'll dim right down, you can barely see it. Thankfully, the problem's not as bad as it was. However, it does dim down. So all three of these phones will have about the same screen brightness when they're in the sun after a while there. So they're about the same there. So the Poco F3, better screen, better performance. It is the flagship killer. It's a very good phone for the price. Uh, however, is it worth that additional 80 or 90 or so euros to some people? I don't really know if it is because it doesn't have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, no FM radio, no micro SD card support. That is why the X3 Pro still in mid 2021, fantastic value offering for what you're getting for around 200 or so euros is really, really good. So that is one of my favorites there. So thank you so much for watching this comparison, re-review of these Poco phones here. And I hope I did answer that question. If you were looking at one of these three, well, now you should know which one is the best for your budget. So if you did like this video, do please give a thumbs up and subscribe for more up and coming videos. And I'll catch you in the next one.